GOP makes history introducing more than 120 anti-LGBTQ plus bills in just the first month of 2023. Republican legislatures have introduced a record number of anti-LGBTQ plus legislation in Congress and state houses only one month into the new year. Advocates say they're not surprised and see this as a continuation of increasing anti-trans rhetoric that has gained momentum across the political spectrum, especially with the Republican base. The American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, tracked over 120 anti-LGBTQ plus bills that have already been filed in January. This includes more than two dozen bills targeting access to medically necessary health care for transgender people across 11 states, most of which are located in the South. According to Victoria Kirby York, the National Black Justice Coalition Director of Public Policy and Programs, these laws will disproportionately impact the Black trans community. Bills proposed this year in South Carolina and Virginia bar state health care providers from recommending or administering puberty blockers, hormones, and gender-affirming surgeries to patients younger than 21. In Oklahoma, legislators went so far as to introduce a bill that bans gender-affirming care and, quote, gender transition procedures, end quote, coverage for trans adults under the age of 26. Most offensively, they have nicknamed this legislation as the Millstone Act, whose name is derived from a Bible verse about punishing adults who harm children. The bill is a direct nod to Christian nationalist ideology. So, my friends, <laughs> uh, that bill name takes me back a little bit to my childhood, uh, Sunday school class, where we had to learn this one particular verse, that it is better to have a millstone wrapped around your neck and dropped into the depths of the ocean than to lead one of my youngest ones astray. So, my thought about this whole bill is triggering from the very beginning back to childhood and bringing this into adulthood of thinking that this is how our legislatures really want to treat people about how we treat each other rather than looking at us with love and respect for each other. So I think as we look at this, we really have to be very careful about how we interpret scripture as being introduced as Bill's names. Yes, it's they it's intentionally weaponizing. They've taken Matthew 18, a verse from from the Gospel of Matthew name the thing. And that's, that is supposed to trigger people who've been abused by the Bible. And it's all supposed to galvanize the fundamentalist community because they know, they know, you know, who talks about a millstone? They know exactly what that means. That is, that is insider language to galvanize this group against that group. It is oppressive. And it's sort of the legacy of Southern states. And that includes Oklahoma. That's sort of, I'm from Arkansas, you're from Alabama. And this is, this is the legacy we are constantly trying to face and, and, and live down that we are from a region that from the beginning has been against somebody and so against somebody that they have to try to control, manipulate, uh, leave out, uh, demonize, enslave. It's always somebody. And I don't think our nation will ever be a healthy nation as long as large parts of the nation continue to value oppression over true liberty for all people. Absolutely. Um, they're, they're always wanting to scapegoat somebody. Again, biblical passage, they want to scapegoat right. somebody. Leviticus. And what's interesting to me about this, and it's very common, bring in the children. Mm -hmm. Save the children. We have to save the children. The children are the most vulnerable. Um, children are frequently the most warm, welcoming, <laughs> accepting people um, around. And to save them from something which doesn't really need to be saved, yeah. um, it's it's appalling. Yeah. It, it really is um, an affront to my faith. I, I want to save trans children exactly, who, are, exactly. who are not going to be able to live their lives exactly. mm -hmm. uh, because of this sort of hateful legislation. Right. I've worked with um, queer youth who are non-binary, who are questioning who they are today, and to deliberately take away any kind of support for them makes absolutely no sense to me. You, you, you and your husband raised children and grandchildren. Uh, what if the, the grandson that you'd raised together uh, had had some special need? Uh, of course, having queer uh, caregivers w would have been in his advantage, but can you imagine the person that you raised to, to uh, being an amazing adult? Uh, if there was a state, your state, keeping him from living his best life and being his true self? It scares me beyond belief that 
we have to still fight this particular fight. And every time we think that things are moving forward, somebody comes up with some crazy idea that, oh, no, 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 we need an enemy. And I think that's what it is almost more than anything else. They need an enemy, somebody to point out as being less than them. And I don't know, even when I grew up in the Black Baptist Church, that was not considered Christian. Right. Mm -hmm. More than an enemy, some of them need an enema. That's, uh, they just need to get some of that nastiness out. Uh -huh. Spiritual enema. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Spiritual enema. That's what we need to do. Ann, why don't you take us on? All right. <laughs> LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.